have kept you waiting. Now, the subject of my talk tonight is love in the presence of pain and suffering. Now, that's a comfortably situated middle-aged bachelor, I must be quite an authority on love and pain, wouldn't you have thought? Now, by pain, I don't mean a nagging discomfort in the intestines, and for that matter, by love, I don't mean a nagging discomfort in the intestines. Now, the question I will put to you tonight, and I will attempt to answer it, is this. If God loves us, why does he allow us to suffer so much? War, pestilence, famine. This is this morning's paper. Now, last night, as I'm sure some of you already know, the number one bus drove into a column of young Royal Marine cadets in Chatham, killing 23 of them. They were 10-year-old boys, marching and singing on their way to a boxing match. The road was unlit. The driver didn't see them. A terrible tragedy. No one was to blame, except. Now, where was he? Why did he stop such a tragedy? What possible point could there be to such a tragedy? <clears throat> Isn't God supposed to love us? Isn't he supposed to care about us? Now, this is another good question. What do we mean by love? When we say that God loves us, I don't think that we mean that God is in love with us. He's not sat by the telephone, writing us letters, I love you madly, hugs and kisses God. I, I don't think so. Perhaps we mean a kind God. Kindness is the desire to see others happy. Not happy in this way or that, but just happy. Not so much a, a father in heaven, but a grandfather in heaven. Now, I, I love to see the young people enjoying themselves. That sort of thing. What does it matter as long as they are happy? Now, I'm going to say something now which I think will come as a bit of a shock, and that is I think that God doesn't necessarily want us to be happy. I think he wants us to be lovable, worthy of love, able to be loved by him. Now, we don't start off being all that all that lovable, if we're honest. I mean, what makes someone difficult to love? Isn't it what is commonly called selfishness? Selfish people are difficult to love because so little love comes out of them. And God creates us free. Free to be selfish. But he puts within us a mechanism which penetrates our selfishness and wakes us up to the presence of others in the world. And that mechanism is suffering. Put it another way. Pain is God's megaphone to rouse the deaf world. Why does it have to be pain? I mean, <laughs> why can't he wake us up more gently with, uh, I know, violins or, or laughter? Perhaps because the dream, to, the dream that we must be waking from is the dream that all is well. <coughs> Greatest illusion of all illusion all is well. Self-sufficiency is the enemy of salvation. If we are self-sufficient, if you are self-sufficient, you have no need of God. If you have no need of God, then you will not seek Him. If you do not seek Him, then you will not find Him. God makes us give to suffering. Through suffering, we release our hold on the toys of this world know that our true good lies in another world. They're like blocks of stone, out of which the sculptor carves the forms of men, the blows of his chisel, which hurt us so much, I will make us perfect. Suffering is not the failure of God's love in the world, it is that love in action. Believe me, this world seems so substantial, it's nothing more than the shadow lands of the world to come. Thank you.
merciless killers. Well, I quite regularly eat one another alive. Uh, we had a short and I thought productive exchange on the moral superiority of herbivores to carnivores. <laughs> At the end of which I said the logic of her position was that she should execute a cat. Oh, oh, and she then said to me, why are you trying to upset me? You don't even know. Miss <laughs> Burton, what is that supposed to prove? I think what Christopher means us to conclude is that women are different. Thank you, Jack. But women are different. Well, this woman was clearly terrified. I like to say, why are you upsetting me? You don't even know me. I mean, she's quite right. One does only seem to distress one's friends. Mm. Different in what way, exactly? The point is this, Alan, that she was unable to distinguish between an intellectual attack and an emotional attack. So, Christopher, some women are very clever, you know. The same, Jack, I mean, what do you think about this? I mean, you're a great supporter of women. How much does that wealth of personal experience? Mr. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Lever believes that only practicing fornicators can teach him sexual morality. Or is it that each man must fornicate for himself? I've never been that clear. In a sense, perhaps I do. A morality presupposes choices. The man who has never fornicated, or wanted to fornicate, or imagined fornicating, has no real moral choice in the matter. <laughs> oh, I see. Beware solipsism, Christopher. Soon you'll be believing that if it hasn't happened to you, it doesn't exist. <laughs> I'm sure you're right, Jack. Already I believe that if it hasn't happened to me, it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> Come along, then, Jack. We're relying on you to speak up for the weaker sex. Oh, yes, yes. yes. After, all, after all, you are a writer of fantasy. <laughs> <laughs> I do talk to women, Christopher. Oh, really? Oh. Yes. Uh, name one woman you've spoken to this week. Well, I addressed a, a conference of women on Monday. So, oh, and and oh, did oh, they address you? They write back. They they, they write me letters. And now, well, well, epistolary intimacy is <laughs> liaison dangereux. I don't profess any special insights on the subject. Uh, Harry here now is your married man. Uh, yeah, of Speaking of which, uh, oh, oh yes, I'll give you that. I must be off too. Was the morning in November? As I very well remember, I was walking down the street in drunken pride. My knees were all aflutter, so I lay down in the gutter, and Pig came up and lay down at my side. As I lay there in the gutter, thinking things I must not utter, a lady passing by was heard to say, You can tell about a fool's with a company he chooses. And the big brother. And slowly walked away. <laughs> Come on, big brother. <laughs> oh, good night, Lewis Major. Good night, Lewis Major. Good night, Christopher. <laughs> oh, thanks for doing the job. Yes, it's a decent claret, I thought. Yeah, very decent. <clears throat> should we, um, should we treat ourselves to a, a cap? Oh, no, no, no. I think I'm, I'm up to a... A top. Yeah. Well, whatever you say. Good night. Good night, Greg. Mm -hmm. Young Greg hasn't quite got it, has he? I don't know. Given time. Young people these days are so serious. I mean, no more than you, I suppose. Um, matter of style. Oh, I remember Christopher. He used to be serious. I remember getting him all, him getting all heated about the abdication. I thought King was incorrectly treated, did he? Yeah, he thought he should be guillotined. Oh. <laughs> now, something I've noticed about. Christopher lives the life of a monk, but all he talks about is women. Well, now, hang on a minute. Harry is the married man. Now, he never says a word about his wife. Well, what, can, what can we conclude from that then, Morty? The women are more interested in theory than in practice. I find it better never to conclude anything. It's going to be a frost tonight. Mm, too many stars. <laughs> Confuses me. You're as bad as Christopher. <laughs> Come on. Mm. Good dinner, Jack. Always is. Night, Jack. Good night, morning. Oh, Miss 
where he longs to be. Home is the sailor, home from the sea. Hunter, look in the hill. Presumably she'll have a little boy with her. What do 
if there are two middle-aged ladies with small boys? Well, let's hope they don't all have tea with us. Douglas has brought one of his not in your books. 
Oh, really? Which one? The magician is never very good. It's not true, is it? Well, it depends what you mean by true. Are you going to put on the magic ring and magic him to this palace? There was a beautiful queen, except she was really a witch. He found the magic apple, brought it back for his mother. She was sick, she got well again. Sounds like a fair synopsis. It's not true. Well, it's true in the story. No, I'm afraid not. Mom, can I leave the table? Is it all right if you rest the out? Well, I don't see why, Mom. Don't go too far, darling. All this, it isn't true. It's his way of saying, I want it to be true. I was just the same at his age. I remember actually announcing to my parents that I had become an atheist. We naturally fact you wanted to believe in God. In something, at least. But I didn't know that then. If I remember correctly, you've been through several phases. You, were, you start, started life as a Jew, then you became a communist, and then you converted to Christianity. Do you remember correctly? But you started with atheism. No. I started with materialism. I had it all worked out by high school. Men are only apes. Life is only an electrochemical reaction. Mind is only a set of conditioned reflexes. The universe is only matter. Matter is only energy. Energy is... <laughs> I forget what I said energy was on the... Extraordinary! Oh, that was all in front. Somewhere deep inside there was somebody else. Somebody lost in dreams. What about the poets? I guess so. So you're a poet, not you, Mrs. Gresham? Major Lewis, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, God save us, she's going to start reciting. I hope I'm not quite that ill, man. No poetry at tea time. I know my names too. But, just to redeem myself a little, I must just tell you that I did once win a National Poetry Award. I shared with Robert Frost. You have heard of Robert Frost. Absolutely. That's all in the past. So why is that? Let's just say I've turned away from the mirror. The mirror being reflection of yourself or reflection of the world. The one being vanity, which is bad. The other being art, which is good. Yes, possibly. You see, I. I don't make that distinction. See yourself in the mirror, you're separate from yourself. See the world in the mirror, you're separate from the world. I don't want that separation anymore. See, I would argue that art has to be the opposite effect. I think that, I think that great art can break through that separateness and, and helps us touch the very heart of reality. Breaks through? Well, then you see, that sounds as if art does all the work. I mean, I'd say we have to do the breaking through ourselves. I mean, art teaches us how to know it when we see it, but, well, art isn't it. I stand corrected. We, we really shouldn't take up any more of your time. Uh, well, it's very kind of you to come. Mom, can I ring the bell? Uh, no. <clears throat> I think we should get the uh, so, how long are you going to be in the country? Uh, till the end of December. And uh, do you expect you'll be in Oxford again? I don't know. I, I might. What do you think, Warney? I think you could uh, rise to a bottle of home brew tea. I think we can manage that. I mean, give us an adequate warning, of course. Thank you. I'd like that. I'll go and see what that happens. Major Lewis, I, I must rely on you to tell me if I take up too much of your brother's time. I'm sure you have time pressures of your own, Mrs. Gresham. Oh, yeah, sure, some. Your brother has given me so much. Mm -hmm. Through his writing, I mean. Ah. I think it might surprise you to know just how much. Mrs. Gresham, nothing surprises me. 
Do you remember the bell in the book? Oh, yes, and the queen was sitting on the stone chair. She was very beautiful. She didn't move or even breathe. But she wasn't dead. No, she was waiting. Waiting for someone to ring the bell? That's right. Do you remember what it said on the pillar beneath the bell? Make your choice adventurous stranger. Strike the bell, find the danger. Can I? It'll break the spell. It'll wake the queen. I don't care. Oh, I don't see why.
vote. <laughs> All in the past. So, how long have you and your brother lived here? Oh my goodness, 25 years, something like that. Precious. No wonder it's so comfortable. My friends will admit it. They say if you move the bookcases, the walls will fall down. Now, uh, make yourselves at home. I'll see if I can sum up some tea. So, what have you got there? Well, I have the way to the wardrobe. Hmm, the vest. You be careful with that. It's probably Mr. Lewis's first copy. I suppose 
so. Jack and Joy. Joy. Right. That's that. So, Jack, have you ever been really hurt? Don't give up. I'm sorry. I withdraw the question. So, what do you do for Christmas? Oh, usual, same as last year. Roast turkey, Christmas, Christmas pudding, far too much to drink. <laughs> what about you? Well, we haven't decided. Some lucky English hotel, I expect. That should be a new experience. And then home for the new year. Home. Yes. You know, um, I have been hurt, really hurt. First time is always the hardest. It's when my mother died. How old were you? I was eight. Old enough to hurt. Yes. It's the end of my world. I remember my father in tears. Doors open and shutting. Voices all over the house. Very big house, long empty corridors. I remember I had the toothache. I, I cried out for my mother to come. I wanted her to come. She didn't come. What was it? It was cancer, usual course, operation, apparent recovery, return of the disease, increasing pain, death. And after death, did you believe in heaven when you were a child? Did you believe you'd see her again? No, she was gone, that, that was that. And you went somewhere secret to cry? I went somewhere secret, I didn't cry. But Douglas, there is some more juice if you would like. No, Jack, we really should be going. So soon, you just, just arrived. Well, it really is very kind of you to come. Well, I'm very glad you asked me. Douglas, book back, coat on. It's very obedient, isn't he? Douglas and I understand each other. You know, Joy, I, I, I don't like to think of you Christmasing in a hotel on your own. I mean, you, you'd both be very welcome to come and stay here. Jack, no, you, you don't want strangers rampaging all over your house. Well, obviously I would have to ask more of you, but for my part, uh, you'd be most welcome. It's kind of you, Jack. You ask Morty, but we can take care of ourselves, I promise you. We're very independent, aren't we, Douglas? Yep. <laughs> you would be doing me a great kindness, uh, I, I'm sure Morty would be delighted. Mom, can we have a curry sauce when we get back home? We'll just have to wait and see, won't we? Goodbye, Jack. Goodbye, George. Goodbye, Douglas.
Christmas is the general presumption of goodwill. I feel no goodwill towards my fellow men. I feel ill. It's got nothing to do with how you feel. It I means things are far too unreliable. That's as may be, Jack, but I, they're very close to me. Uh, I want to hear the word said against them. They're easily hurt. And a great Christmas is something the lost cause, Jack. But it depends on how it's presented. I and mean, if you say to people that it's, you know, peace of the world in the world and, and being kind to the poor and the needy, then naturally nobody listens. Aha! The arch communicator in action. Now give us the sales pitch, Jack. Virgin has sex with omnipotent alien. It's birth to God. I've always thought that the incarnation showed that God has a very limited intellect. I mean, who voluntarily becomes human when you have the option of becoming a remaining safely divine? Well, think about the magic, though, Christopher. It's, it's, it's the coming of a helpless, squealing creature who is also God. It's, a, it's an all-powerful baby. I'm sure you, that satisfies your taste in the peculiar. You know, it's, it's, it's the coming of new life in the heart of winter when the whole world is dead. Snow falls, trees are bare, all but one tree bears fruit. I mean, that's the magic. I think you're a little hard on the board, maybe, Jack. No room at the inn, remember? Ah, Jack's inviting them to stay with us. Oh, really? Yeah. So, mother and child, they're upstairs. Oh, what, what mother and what? Mrs. Gresham and her son oh. are spending Christmas with us. Oh, well, oh. you have managed to surprise me, Jack. Uh, and who is Mrs. Gresham? Let's wait and see. She's an American. Oh, I'm curious, sir. I'm curious, sir. <laughs> Merry Christmas. <laughs> ah, Joy. <laughs> Let me introduce you. Uh, this is uh, Dr. Morris Oakley. Uh, this is uh, Reverend Harry Harrington. And uh, this is Christopher Wright. Delighted to meet you, Mrs. Gresham. Uh, Mrs. Gresham, how opportune. Uh, they tell me you're from the United States of America. Yes, I am. Well, then perhaps you can satisfy my curiosity on a small matter. Uh, Jack's children's stories, they tell me, are published in America. Are they or are they not in translation? Uh, I don't understand. Uh, uh, the Lion, the Witch, and the uh, Clothes Closet? They hate us, Oh, forgive me, Jack. The success breeds envy, is it? Oh, I don't know what you mean by success. All well, my friends think that my children's writing is some form of juvenile dimension. Have you read any of them, Professor Early? Oh, Jack has read extracts of them to me. It's one of his tests of friendship. <laughs> He's been reading me for Philip Sidney. Is that more bearable? Bearable? Sidney's glorious. He is, isn't he? He has this inspired image of desire. Capital D. As a baby that won't stop bawling. Sleep, baby mine. Desire, nurse, beauty singing. Her cries, oh baby, they set my head naked. Good old uh, Sidney, he's uh, very down on desire. Babies just yell when they get what they want. I mean, that's what I love about the image. It's precise. Nowadays, poets are so lazy. <laughs> you're, you're, you're just like me, Joy. She's uh, dragging me, kicking and screaming into the 20th century. I'd be forced feeding Jack T.S. Eliot. But even Eliot could be lazy. When the evening is spread out against the sky, like a patient etherized upon a table, I mean, what kind of an image is that? He could just as easily have said, like a, well, like a, like a cocktail sausage upon a tray. <laughs> uh, congratulations, Jack. You, you seem to have found a soulmate. I didn't think you believed we had souls, Mr. Oh, well, now, you see, I, I consider the soul an essentially feminine accessory, anima, uh, quite different from the male variant, animus, uh, which is how I uh, distinguish between the gender sexes, where, where men have intellect and women have soul. Oh. Professor Riley, as you know, uh, I am an American, and different cultures have different modes of discourse. <laughs> I need a little guidance here. Are you being offensive or really stupid? <laughs> <laughs> um. <laughs> Serves you right, Christopher. I feel like calling for police protection. Uh, what on earth did you find her? 
I'll tell them this is Russian. How do you find England? Cold, dull. How very perceptive, how original. And I don't much care for the weather either. <laughs>
wants a divorce. I have no idea. Could you? People don't know other people's lives. You have to live it to know it. Sorry. You don't agree with that. Well, contrary to popular belief, I don't know everything. A lot of good things have come out of my life with Bill. We were happy at the beginning, and there's Douglas, and, and there's something else, too. Something important that happened to me that, in a strange way, I owe the Bill. Something I don't talk about, but, but I'd like to tell you, if you don't mind. Yes, please, tell me. Maybe you'll say I imagined it. You know, I, I don't think so. It only lasted a few seconds, but it changed everything for me. I've been turning into a different person ever since. What happened? We were living in Westchester County. Bill was working in the city, in New York. One day, phoned me from his office, said he was losing control of his mind. He was never coming home. Then he put down the phone. That was it. I had a small baby. I was all alone. I had no idea what to do. I put Douglas to bed and I waited. He didn't come. Around about midnight, I, I broke down. I, I never felt so Douglas was upstairs asleep. I was downstairs. I was crying. And then, suddenly, there was somebody else in the room. Just for a few seconds, maybe half a minute. I knew it was a real person. So real. Shadows. I said something. I have no idea what. I, I think I was just saying, okay then. Okay. Jack, you know, I, I'm sorry. I, 
I didn't mean to burn you with all of this. Don't you worry about me. I'll be fine. I always have been. I just wish there was something I could do. There is. So? Be my friend. That's all right. with you, Christopher. Is it safe to come in? La Belle Dame, son merci. You know perfectly well she's gone back to New York. Tom's latest, as promised, uh, the only copy. Is it any good? Not bad. If he wasn't a friend, I'd say pretty good. Morning, morning. Morning, Christopher. Uh, just as well, perhaps, Jack. What's just as well? Uh, the return of the native. What are you trying to say? Oh, well, you know how people talk. I don't know and I don't care. I don't see why two people aren't allowed to be friends. Oh, I won't go with that. Friendship forever. It's just love and sex these days. Soon friendship will be as an outmoded notion as chastity. You know, friends will be like elves and pixies. Mystical creatures from a distant past. Uh, far too optimistic, Jack. Friendship will be outlawed, clearly. The accused has been found guilty of gross public friendship. <laughs> I hereby pass sentence of five years marriage with no remission. No <laughs> use, of course. Never is any. Shall we see you in the hall, warning, like old times? Like old times.
Tell me something, Christopher. How can I do this? Did you say that you were content? I am as I am. The world is as it is. Uh, my contentment or otherwise has little to do with it. You don't ever feel a sense of waste. <laughs> of course. All life is waste. Uh, remember, I don't have your faith in divine recycling. Find this the trying time of the year. Leaves are not yet out. There's mud everywhere. Frosty mornings have gone. Sunny mornings are not yet here. The air is dank and unhealthy. Give me frozen pipes and blizzards any day, but not this nowhere land, not this waiting room of the world. May will come, Jack, and June and July. Mm. I've got two books to finish, six talks to write, and letters, letters, letters.
I always think like building houses like a revolution. The old order is overthrown and the new one is not yet born. One wakes to find strange ways and one's books are in strange places. There's nowhere to hang on and stress it down. When did you last move house? Oh, good heavens, 25 years ago. Thank God that's over. <laughs> oh, I don't know why I forgot all this stuff. What is it? My uncollected works. How can I have written all of this? It's nothing to be ashamed of. Well, you haven't read it. <clears throat> Nor will you. What can I do to help? Books on the shelves. A any particular order? Oh, just put them wherever they'll fit. I'll sort them out later. So what does Bill think about you moving to England? Well, I don't think he likes it. But, on the other hand, he can't only afford to give us sixty dollars a month, and well, England's cheaper. That doesn't sound an awful lot, is that enough? We'll <laughs> manage. What made you decide? Well, to come to England. I had to live somewhere. And mm. uh, England's cheaper. I like Oxford. I I like the way it's been here a, a long time. Not everything is the impulse of the moment. I like being among educated people, and I like living in the same town as you. Do you mind? Why should I mind? Do you mind? <clears throat> no, I don't mind. You know what I'm trying to say, Jack? Why don't you believe me? I like being your neighbor. Well, I believe you. It's just, well, <clears throat> you don't say it all, do you? Well, I can't say it all. It takes too long. All right, Jack. But I trust you to tell me anything I need to know. Like what? What would what, what, what be said? I want to stay friends with you, Jack. I need to know anything that would make that hard for you. Oh, I see. Well, we may as well know where we are. What, like having it out of the open? That's the way I like it. It's funny, people never know what's going on between two people, do they? Who jumps to conclusions? It makes me angry. You can't just, just be friends. Like us, you mean? Yes, like us. I mean, that's not to say that friendship isn't in its way uh, something that's important. I've always found it to be one of life's most precious things, but... But? But I don't think it should be brought down to something that it's not, such as... Such as? Well, such as romantic love. Uh, not, that's not saying that uh, friendship in, in its own way is a kind of... Uh, a kind of love? Yes. And you don't understand. Oh, I understand better than that, Jack. You are a bachelor, and I am a divorced woman. Some people might suppose you to have some idea of marrying me. You have no such idea. I am to have no false expectations. You want to have this out in the open because, well, because you care about me. You don't want me to be hurt. Have I understood you correctly? You are extraordinary. <laughs> I don't know what to say. It's okay. I just said it all. It wasn't so hard, was it? Yes, it's just I'm not used to this, um... Naming names. That's all it is. Yes, this naming names. So, now you don't need to be afraid of me, do you? <laughs> I was never afraid of you, Jim. You know, I... I really do appreciate your help, Jack. Well, if there's anything else that I can do, you will let me know. I don't want to exhaust your goodwill. No, I, I think that it grows by being drawn. Jack, if I was to ask you for something and you couldn't give it, well, you would say no, wouldn't you? I mean, just no, no. Guilt, no evasion, no running away. Well, no, but I don't think you'd ask me to 
do anything that's outside of my power to do. No, it's not out of your power. Is there something particular? Jack, there is something that you could do for me. Something that would help me a great deal. I think I know what it is. You want me to put the kettle on? Somerset House and the uh, Department of Immigration. It's just a bureaucratic agreement.
to witness that I, Helen Joy Davidman, do take thee, Clive Staples Lewis, do take thee, Clive Staples Lewis, to be my lawful wedded husband. To be my lawful wedded husband. Do we have a ring? No. No. No ring. Very well. If you both please sign the register and make sure, make sure all the uh, details are exactly correct before you sign. I said 
Good luck for Saturday. <laughs> Frankly, I'm worried about him. His behavior is entirely out of character. He's been a very great help to him. It's like a witch. I know they've become good friends. Well, husband and wife. Well, fine. But what can one say? The woman is dying. Not anymore. Not dying? No, no. Jack says she's recovering, the cancer's stopped spreading. Oh, well, that's good news. Excellent news. So, what will you do, Wally? What do you mean? Oh, well, if she does recover, where will you live? I don't know. Ah, Christopher, excellent news. It seems Mrs. Gresham is not to die after all. Oh, that is good news. I think we'd best start calling her. Mrs. Lewis, don't you know? Yes, yes. If she does recover, we shall chalk this up as a victory to the power of prayer. I've never really understood about prayer. Uh, does God intervene in the world only when asked? It has been known. And what are the qualifications for divine aid? Uh, merit, intense suffering, persistent prayer. I mean, how does he choose? I think this is the time or the place for a theological argument. And if God knows what we need, what's best for us, why do we need to ask? Uh, doesn't he know what's best for us? Doesn't he know what? Jack, Christopher's being Christopherish about prayer. Prayer. <laughs> I pray all the time these days. I think if I stop praying, I'd stop living. And God hears your prayers, doesn't he? Oh, we hear Joy's getting better. Yes, she is. I'm very glad, Jack. That's not why I pray for that. I pray because I'm helpless. I pray because I need help. I pray because the need flows out of me, day and night, waking and sleeping. It doesn't change me. It doesn't change God. It changes me. Now that I understand. That's the first sensible thing I've heard anyone say on the subject. We mustn't get our hopes up. I mean, she is getting better. Mustn't expect too much. One, we shouldn't go. Ready when you are, Jack. Well, Mr. Lewis, I think you should actually come and see this for yourself. Well, see what? She's doing rather well, all things considered. Rather well. <laughs> Joy. <laughs> Still a little wonky. Well, show me. Okay. Look at that little thing. Good show, George. Do some more. Slowly, slowly now. Yes, come on. Sit and rest. So, when do we take her home? Well, as soon as you like. I see no reason to keep her in hospital as long as the uh, remission continues. Which is how long? It could be months. Could be weeks. Why not years? That would be unusual in such an advanced case. I'm sorry, you did want to know. We'll take what we can get. So, how would you like to come home? Where is home, Jack? Well, to my house, to our house. I mean, you are my wife after all. Wally and I are going to look after you. Last warning. A warning? Mm, well, don't worry about me, Jack. I'll sort myself out. What do you mean? Well, you know, new dits, no problem. Is that what you want? As you wish, Jack. Well, no, I don't wish. Oh, right, you're on there. Well, there we go. That's that. <laughs> I'll see you. Oh, then, Joy. Um, see you at home, Warning. <laughs> Good
about miracles. Why not? It's a miracle to me. Miracles frighten me. Take it when it's offered, I say. Frighten the loving God too much for giving you back to me. That way I can just as easily hate him later. Don't be so hard on yourself, Jack. Thank God now and let later come later. Anyway, it's not such a big miracle after all that you're coming back to life. What's wrong with it? You leave my miracle alone. You were alive before, I wasn't. What are you talking about? I started living, and I started loving you, Joy. That makes me just a few months old. Could be a short life, Jack. This is a life. Well, you think we should send him to University of Hard Knocks? 
So he'll learn how to say, I know nothing about it all, but I can call a spade a spade. I knew it. That honest Jack routine you pull on your radio talks is all a front. You're an intellectual snob. And a smug and a highbrow, yes. <laughs> I'm not insulting you, Jack. I'm criticizing you. Oh, really? Then enlighten me. The education system in this country is prehistoric. The boys at Douglas' school talk about going to university as if it was going to the moon. Well, I don't see why that's criticism of me. Of course I'd like all the boys to go to university. No, I can't even three furry assumptions there. You'd like, well that's the language of my preference, not active concern. I mean, you wouldn't say I'd like as many boys to be saved from starvation. Yes, but that's just like... Wait, wait, I haven't finished. Second furry assumption, boys. What about girls? Ah, conceded. Third furry assumption, you like as many to go to university as possible. What makes it possible, Jack? God? Chance? The weather? How about people like you? The high priests of the sacred cult of the intellectual elite? It's just verbal bastards. You always want to have the last word. Well, there's precious, precious little hope of that here. Too old to change now. Do you mind? What? Well, you being too old or you being a bully? Either. No, I don't mind. I don't want to be young anymore. Well, you're young, you're looking ahead, you're always looking at the next Ben Singles coming around the corner. I'm not looking ahead anymore. I'm just happy to be here now with you. That's enough. People go on journeys for their honeymoon, Jack. What do you mean abroad? Well, there's no need to sound quite so alarmed. Oh. I remember my mother taking warning at me to burn it on the some before she died. It's the only time I've ever been bored. Ah, that 1907. Where would you like to get? Well, I've, I've always wanted to go to Greece. To see the Parthenon. And the Temple of Apollo at Delphi. Lion's Gates at Mycenae. Where would we stay? Some little Greek hotel. Are you up to it? Me? Well, I am if you are. I think if I had to walk into a hotel with a woman and sign the register, I think I'd probably blush. <laughs> well, that's settled then. <laughs> the Isles of Greece. Tell me the sun, he'll sit again. Your water accepts. 
One thing I hate about hotels is there's always someone hanging around trying to be helpful. Service for saying the prayers in bed. Well, you can order us some prayers if you want. Me? I would like a gin and tonic. But now, we've, we've only just had breakfast. So? <laughs> oh, hello again, yes, sir. This is Mr. Lewis's room. Uh, we'd like to order room service, please. Uh, we'd like some drinks brought up to the room, if that's convenient. Um, yes, we'd like, we'd, like, we'd like a gin and tonic and, um, uh, um, and another gin tonic. Yes, that, 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 that's two gin and tonics. Well, it's actually two gins and tonics. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. I know, I panicked. <laughs> you know, people used to worship the sun. I can understand that. You can understand people worshiping the sun in England where the sun had shines, but here, I mean, it's like a, it's like a waiter hanging around for a tip. It's, it's no mystery, no class. Jack, it's a, it's a feeling. You just don't know how to be in the sun. I don't know what you mean. Come over here and I'll show you. No, I don't like surprises. Come over here. This isn't going to work. Now, put that face of yours up here. Feel the sun on your face. So close you can stick out your tongue and lick it. No words, no thoughts. Just the sun on your face. The sound of the wind in the arm of the trees. She cries. In this land, nothing is impossible. Nothing is forbidden. You might even take off your coat. Say stick. <laughs> I was elected fellow Maudley. <laughs> no kidding. I didn't think there was any experience to beat that, this side of paradise. This is paradise to me. Don't say that. Paradise lasts. It's beautiful here. Being with you is everything I want. Talk about that now. We don't want to spoil the time we have together. Don't spoil it. Makes it precious. The simple things. The ordinary things. Each time you touch me, I feel it like a shock. Your nearness. Your reality. You. What will you do when I die?
doesn't know. I want to be with you then, Jack. And the only way that I can do that is to talk to you about it now. I'll manage. Don't worry about it. No, I, I think it could be better than that. Better than just managing. What I'm trying to say is that pain then is part of this happiness now. I know your footsteps. I can tell it's you coming up the road. I know it's you long before you reach the house. I never knew I could be so happy so late in life. The day I come home, there you are. The first words you speak, I know what kind of mood you're in. Even if you don't speak, I can still tell from the lines on your face. I watch you while you work in your desk. I study you. I learn you. Every day I come home, there you are. I still can't get used to it. Every day. There you are, just the sheer availability of happiness. You made me so happy. I reach out to you. There you are. I put my arms around you. There you are. I kiss me. You made this world kind to me. I'm so very grateful. Grateful for all the ordinary domestic pleasures. Grateful. Yes. Let's get you into this chair. so much. I hate to see you in pain. Life hasn't begun yet. Oh, God, you just better be right. Marcus. You're, uh, your mother is very sick. She's very sick.
sorry. Still here. Still here. Poor baby Janet. Get some sleep. Sin. Yeah. Mm. Yes. Has it been worth it? Three years of happiness. Yes. I'm tired, Jack. I want to rest. I just don't want to leave you. You want me to go? Just stories to me. Good stories. I don't know what I'm going to do, Joy. You're going to have to tell me what to do. I don't know what to say now. I love you, Joy. I love you so much. 
You may be happier than I ever thought I could be. You're the truest person I've ever known. So would Jesus be with my beloved wife, Joy? Forgive me for loving her too much. Have mercy on us both. Better sooner than later, better quick than slow. After all, there was no question about it. The writing was on the wall. And this Jack taking is very bad. Remarkable man, Jack. Faith as solid as a rock. Harry, those few well-chosen words in the church. I, I seem to hear, I heard you think, say something along the lines of, uh, all who loved her, uh, all who knew her loved her. Something like that. Not quite God's own truth, was it? Good grief, Christopher, what was I supposed to say? Nobody could stand her. Jack loved her. That's what's true and that's what matters. But you didn't and I didn't. But she's dead. Death does not improve the character. You don't love anyone, Christopher, as far as I can tell. Well, that may well be so, but Harry here still shouldn't tell Wobbers. Jack was standing six feet away. Jack wouldn't have minded. He's changed. She did that. She was a remarkable woman. But I'm damned if I'm going to start liking her just because she's dead. Did you like her warning? Well, I first, but... Oh, yes. Remember that time, just after you came back from... I wasn't the and I, um, thought I would. Life, um, must go on. I'm not sure that it must, but it does. I'm sorry I couldn't come to the church, Jack. It's all right. Though. And my little address, Jack, was it, um... I'm sorry, Harry, I didn't, um... I didn't hear a single word. I don't know what you said. That's fine, fine. Perfectly understandable. Are you all right, Jack? No. Thank God for your faith, Jack. Where would you be without that? I'd be here, drinking my port. Well, quite. What I meant was, it's only your faith that makes sense. No! It's not good enough, Harry. This is a mess and there's no other word for it. A mess? Well, what sense do you make of it? What sense do you? Jack, we have to have faith that God knows. Oh yes, God knows. God knows, but does he care? Does he care about joy? Why are you talking like this? We can't see what's best for us. You know that. We're not the creator. No, we're just the creatures. We're just the rats in the cosmic laboratory. I'm sure that this experiment is for our good eventually, but it still makes God the vivisectionist. This is your brief talking. What was, what was talking before, my complacency? Please, Jack, please. I'm sorry, Harry. You're a good man. I shouldn't have spoken to you like that. It's just that I've come up and get some experience recently, and uh, it's a brutal teacher. You learn fast. Forgive me. I'm not fit company, are you? I should have come. Excuse me. Sorry, Morty. That was unnecessary. Everyone understands, Jack. It's just that I, I can't see her. I can't remember her face. I can't remember what she looks like. What's happening to me? I expect it's just shock. I'm just so frightened that the suffering, it's, it's, it's 
it's just suffering, that it's just no pay, purpose, no, no sense, no plan, no... That it's just pain, the world of pain. I, I don't know what to tell you, Jack. There's nothing you can tell me. There's nothing to say. My mother died when I was your age. It was cancer too. I remember thinking that if I believed she'd get better and prayed hard enough, she wouldn't die. She did. It doesn't work. No, it doesn't work. I don't care. I do. When I'm alone, I cry. Do you cry? No! I loved your mother very much. I loved her too much. She knew that. She said... She said it would be worse later. It's not fair, is it? If you, if you want the happiness, you have to have the pain. Why she had to get sick? Nor me. You have to let it go. You can't hold on to it. Jack? Yes? Do you believe in heaven? Yes? I don't believe in heaven. It's okay. I'm sure we'll like to see her again. Me too. Uh, 
hurt us so much. It will make us perfect. It will shatter us. It's dark, it's a silence. The pain cries like a child. So it ends like all affairs of the heart. Exhaustion. Only so much pain as possible. And then rest. So it comes when I am quiet. When I'm quiet, she returns to me in my uh, mind, in my memory. comes close to me, and I love her again, as I did then, even though I know I will be hurt again, I will lose her again. So it is that Jack Lewis, there's no answer to the question except this. I was given a choice twice in my life. The child chose safety. The man chooses suffering. I went to my wardrobe this morning. I said for my old brown coat. What I used to wear before. Then I realized that uh, that he was when he came back from Greece.